hello, this is MakerJ101, and I'm finally going to attempt to make a ZVS driver. Hopefully it will be successful this time. Um, I have actually tried a couple other times, but they failed because I probably didn't have very good MOSFETs, was the main reason. Um, I was probably try I was using ones that were um, rated for 6 amps, and that's just not enough, I don't think, for it to make a good ZVS. But um, anyway, here's the circuit um, diagram here, and I'm actually going to be using some IRFP 460s um, and I got these from a power supply the same as this one here um, very big power supply um, I'm not really sure what it was probably for a server or something like that um, but here's I had two of them and I couldn't get them to work um, so I took the one apart the one that didn't didn't seem to do anything at all I took it apart and these things are built beefy um, this is like really, actually very heavy. Um, I mean, there's a good bit of components on there. This one is mostly diodes, um, very large diodes on there, and um, a lot of capacitors. And there's actually some LM317s there. Oh wait, yeah, right here. These two are LM317s. So I'll have to take those off. I haven't butchered this board yet. I already butchered the power board. Um, but this is just kind of the rectifying and the transformer board. And then this one was, or yeah, it rectifies after it comes out of the um, transformer. This one rectifies um, the mains and it has more of the control gear on it. Um, but it has some nice, um, nice droids there and pretty nice heat sinks and um, capacitors there. So, so yeah. Um, so the next thing I need to do is to find some Zener diodes, um, and I need 12, somewhere between 12 and like 15 volts, something like that, um, should be good. Um, let's see, also these, um, these MOSFETs that I'm using are rated for 20 amps, 500 volts, so they should be good. Okay, so now I just wanted to test my MOSFETs to make sure that they worked, because the power supply didn't work and I wasn't sure if maybe it was the MOSFETs. So, this is basically the circuit I have hooked up right now. Well, minus this resistor and that resistor, because those are just my hands. But basically, I have it connected up to my power supply, so negative wires connected up to the source. So this is a source pin right over here. Um, this one is the drain, and that goes through this light bulb right here, which is my load into the positive 12 volts. And then this is my, um, my gate. So when I connect this gate, because MOSFETs are very sensitive. When I connect this gate, or when I just touch it like this and then touch positive, if it's an N-channel MOSFET, it will turn on. It'll turn on the light. And then it'll slowly probably drain, I mean the light bulb will slowly get dimmer. And then if I touch the um, negative, it will turn off. So this resistor right here just pulls it down, um, which basically because it has capacitance in there, um, that basically just drains the capacitance out of it, so if I wanted to make an on-off switch, that'd be basically how I'd do it. And then this one just limits the current because the gate is very, very sensitive, and if you put too much voltage to it, it will basically just fry it. So, usually they have a, um, a rating, minus plus minus 20 volts, so if I put more than 20 volts in, it's probably going to ruin the MOSFET. But I just have it hooked up to 12 volts, so I don't need a Zener diode or anything like that. So right now the light bulb is off. Now if I touch this, the gate wire here and this other wire, turns on. And if I touch the ground here, turns off. So these are both good MOSFETs. I tested the other one already. And so it's basically a little touch lamp, I guess you could say. Kind of. <laughs> so yeah, kind of cool. Um, so now we know our MOSFETs work. So I can find some diodes and zener diodes and zener diodes. So all right, so now I need some zener diodes. So the zener diodes job, I think, is to actually keep the because the gate is very fragile and if it goes over the um rated gate voltage, it will just kill the MOSFET. So basically the gate voltage is determined or if there's too, mu too much voltage between the source and the gate, then it will blow. My MOSFETs are rated at plus minus 20 volts um, for a gate to source voltage. So if I use anything 
for a Xenor Diode, the Xenor Diode's job is basically to get turn any any voltage above any current and voltage above its rated voltage. So if it's 12 volt Xenor Diode, anything above that, it will basically um, turn into heat. So it basically keeps too much um, voltage from getting to whatever you want to protect. So so yeah. So anything. So my um, the rating for mine are 20 volts. So anything any Xenor Diode less than 20 volts should do the job. So I'm going to probably use. And I also looked up the on um, the on power for my MOSFET, and it's about um, I don't know, I forget exactly what it is, but I think it was like six volts or something like that. So anything above six volts and below 20 volts should be good for a Zener diode. So so I'm going to show you how to test for Zener diodes and find them. So usually, actually, Zener diodes are a lot more common than I thought um, originally. Um, this circuit board here is just a um, TV board of some kind. I think it's monitor. But right here there was a Zener diode that I took out, and that was actually an 8.2 volt Zener diode, and there was actually a bunch of 8.2 volt Zener diodes on here. So that's what actually what I'm going to use. Um, there they are right there. I'm going to show you how to test it. So a normal diode, this is a normal diode right here, when you connect the black of your... So basically I have this circuit right here hooked up. Um, so I've got my power supply here. And then here's my diode, my Zener diode, connected backwards. So normally the line would be, for a normal diode, the, the line part of the um, symbol would be more towards the negative side of the battery. And this is just a resistor here. I'm using um, one kilo ohm just to limit the current because it's not, it's a somewhat sensitive component. It can't take too many, volt, too ma too many amps. Um, and then my voltmeters across the Zener diode to figure out what the voltage drop is. So, get this out of the way here. Okay, so here's my resistor. So, my power supply right here is set on like 16 volts or something, and I've got my multimeter there. And so when you connect up a diode in the normal way, with the black line there connected to the negative, you will get a voltage drop across the diode. So, across the diode there of about 0.7 volts, but that depends on what kind of diode it is. So, now with a normal diode, if you switch it around, put the black over on the other side, you won't get any voltage drop, or at least to a really high voltage, whatever its voltage rating is. But a Zener diode, when you connect it up the normal way, so if I connect black to black, and the other lead to the other right lead, we shouldn't actually get a voltage or, I mean, yes, it will act like a normal diode, 0.8 volts drop. So that's actually acting as a normal diode that way. But if I switch it around, it's going to act as a Zener diode. And whatever its rated voltage is, that's what voltage, what the voltage drop will be. So there you can see this is an 8.2 Zener diode, volt Zener diode, and that's what it's rated for. And usually Zener diodes will say on the diode itself, um, on the package, what, what um, on the casing, what, what, what the rating is. This one says 8.2 on there. You can't see it because the camera doesn't have very good focus. But um, and usually on the circuit board, it'll also it'll be marked with the Zener diode symbol, or it'll say um, the component number. Usually, most manufacturers put that on there. It'll be like for a normal diode, it'll be a D, but for a Zener diode, it'll be Z and then the number, or ZD and then the number. You might be able to see that it's getting into focus, although it's upside down, but whatever. Okay, so now we have some Zener diodes, and I'm going to use 8.2 8 volt Zener diodes for the um, for the ZVS. So the next step is to find some fast switching diodes. Okay, so now we need these two um, 400 volt fast diodes. Um, these are the two I found. Um, these are actually two in each package. Um, so they're connected in that way, like that. And these are actually fast recovery diodes. I'm not really sure what the difference is, but the recovery time is 25 nanoseconds, so that's actually pretty good. Um, some other people on their ZVSs were using um, like 50 nanoseconds and ones like that. So this is actually a pretty good one, and it can handle 20 amps. 300 volts reverse, that's, that's fairly good. Um, I don't know if it should be enough for, that says 400 volts. But um, this should be good enough. 
if I burn them out, I'll just get new ones because this Ford has a bunch of them on it. This was from a um, plasma TV. But, um, and yeah, so there's the part number if you want to look it up. And I used um, IC Online. That's my favorite um, data sheet website because they're all free and you don't have to download them. You can just view them on the internet. So that I love that website. It's the best one for finding um, for finding ICs and diodes and whatever. So um, the next step, I guess, is to I guess we need some resistors. So we need these 10K resistors and the 170 ohm resistors. After looking through most of my resistors, these are the largest ones. There's the rest of my resistors. And these are the ones that were closer that I was thinking of adding together to get 470 ohms. But then after looking through some of the smaller ones, I found these 1 watt 470 ohm resistors. So these should be good enough. Um, so I'm just going to use these, and if they overheat, then I'll have to make some, make a 470 ohm with a bunch of other resistors in parallel and series and see if I can get close to it or do with like 680 ohm one. So I'll just use those for now and I'll start wiring up the circuit. Alright guys, we have it all wired up and I'm pretty excited because this is looking pretty nice. So now all we have to do is test it out. I have not tested this thing yet. I sure hope it works because I spent a couple hours on this thing. So yeah, it looks pretty good and I sure hope it'll work. But yep, yeah, so there's all my components there. Diodes here, just using one of each of these diodes because it's a um, diode pair there and then we've got our two MOSFETs and I've got my 470 ohm resistors there those are only one watt so I might need to replace those if they overheat and then I've got my 1k or my 10k resistor and my Zener diode under each of the beads there you can't really see it but yes they're under there and there's my inductor this is 158 um, micro henrys and then we have my capacitors there on a barrier strip. That seemed like the easiest way to connect them because I might need to vary the amount there. And um, those are about 0.6 or 0.7 um, microfarads. Each one is 2.2 approximately microfarads. I'm not really sure what the voltage is, so it's good that I connected them like that. And then there's my little terminal block there for my um, flyback. Nice, decent sized flyback, I suppose. Um, and this is where the power will go in right here. So, let's test it out and hope no magic smoke comes out. So, I'll hook it up and I'll be back. Alright, so here we go. I did not test it yet. So, we'll try it on 5 volts first, I suppose. Um, they're not supposed to work on 5 volts. Well, that I've, at least on the, 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 the schematic I have gotten doesn't say power supply is not doing anything or I mean it's not cutting out woo it works look at that little arc not huge but it does work about half an inch, I'd say. Turn it off and I'll get the camera a little closer here. But you can zoom in. Here we go. Look at that, a nice little arc. Out of my first CVS. Pretty quiet arc. It looks pretty hot too because it's getting the pin glow in there. Should we try 24 volts? I don't know if my supply, if my power supply will supply enough current for it, but let's try it anyway. Nope, power supply just shuts off. Oh! Wow! That's pretty good. You just have to start it real close. Wow, it's like almost it's like almost a bluish or it's like a really hot colored arc. 
That is cool. Man, that's cool. Alright, well, that's my first CVS, so, um, you're gonna be seeing some more videos of this as long as my MOSFETs hold up, so. Alright, well, I was just using a little bit more on my power supply on the 24 volts, and, um, and I was measuring the current, and it gets about 6 amps, 24 volts, but the, um, uh, the negative 12 volts there is only rated for, I think it was like 2 or 3 amps, so, um, and some smoke just came out of my power supply and stopped working, so, uh, I <laughs> guess I'll have to fix that sometime, but, um, I guess I should try it on some 12 volt batteries and see what happens. Okay, so now I've got two 12 volt batteries hooked up, I have no idea what it's going to do, and I've got a nice little switch there, and a breaker, this is 7 amp, so that should pop if we're drawing too many amps and protect the circuitry hopefully so let's try it out hopefully you can see the multimeter there yeah you can all right here we go Ooh, that's nice look at that that's about an inch almost an inch and a half there. it's only drawn almost eight amps there at the farthest Wow, we almost got two inches right there. I'm gonna burn up the flyback if I do that more. So it's burning the plastic. Yeah, right there we get nearly two inches. Right, let me get a roller here. Yeah, just about two inches. That is pretty good, that is awesome. Well, I have made my first flyback, so that will be the first of some flyback videos uh, as long as my um, my nice MOSFETs hold up. It's a little warm. Oh, the leads of my multimeter are a little bit uh, squishy. Nice and hot. So I'm drawing a little too many amps for the uh, multimeter there. The leads, i got to get some different leads on here because these are the cheap ones that come with it. These are the, like the $4 meters. They just have the wimpiest leads. <laughs> Those are like the first things to go. But, um... Yeah, so that works real nice. All right, so now I've got my multimeter with um, slightly, with homemade slightly better leads on it, and we get much better arcs with that. So it was the leads that were restricting the current there a bit, but and we've got better leads, so we should be able to get some better arcs now. Let's test this. We have to have it really close, or else it just blows the um, seven amp fuse. Oh, oops, I got it too close, or I didn't have it far enough away, so it took too many amps for the spark to or the arc to start. All right, there we go. So that's whoop, about one and a half there. Let's get this thing to be set. Almost two inches there. So that is pretty good. So I don't know how many, if I should try to get it, try it without the fuse or not, or I think I have a 15 amp fuse. Maybe I should try that. So yeah, I'll be right back. All right, so just replaced my breaker with 15 amp. Um, breaker, so let's see how it goes now. What? What happened? That's not good. Oh, there we go. Oh shoot! There goes the MOSFET. I don't know if you saw that, but it just blew smoke everywhere. Darn. I ruined it. <laughs> so, well, that's the end of the ZVS, I guess. I guess I'll have to buy some MOSFETs then. So, yeah, it just... Plumes some smoke. Yeah. <sighs> so... Shoot. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Alright, so I have a couple of um, ideas why this might have burned out. One, that the heat sink after they burned out, after this one burned out, I'm not sure about this one, um, but this one did got awful hot because this solder right here actually melted. Um, and it, I rewatched the video. It didn't look like it was drawing. It might have gone off scale for a minute there, but I'm not. And I wasn't really arcing it for that long, so it could be that I have too small a heat sink. That could be part of it. The other thing is that um, it could have drawn a lot of amps from the power supply from the batteries. Um, 
So tell me what you think, how, why, what caused it to burn out, burn, burn out the MOSFETs, because these are only rated for 20 amps, so it could have gotten over amped really easily, especially on 24 volts like this. Um, so I need a couple of ideas here, or a couple tips. Um, <clears throat> so how do I keep them from burning out next time? Because, uh, or I have a couple options of um, either I could try using the 6 amp MOSFETs that I have and connecting a bunch in parallel to get a higher amp rating. Um, or I could buy new MOSFETs, which I might do. I might buy some extra ones. Um, so tell me what kind of MOSFETs would probably be best, um, or like what the cheapest ones are, or what you guys like. Um, so, um, and the other, or the other option is just to take this other power supply part, which I probably will do because I haven't gotten this power supply to work yet. So, and I've tried a couple times, so I think they threw it out probably because it was bad. So, um, so I'll probably take that apart and get the MOSFETs out of there. Um, the other MOSFETs that were in it, these ones, um, were, are actually only, um, 6.6 .6 amps, so not real good. So, how do I, for the future, if I make this e hand with the same MOSFETs, um, how do I limit the current going in to less than 20 million, 20 amps? That's my main question. Do I need to have a different combination of, um, capacitors and inductor? Because I just kind of got some random, um, inductors here, and on here, on this schematic here, it says between 47 and 200 um, micro, micro henries. so that's what I basically, this is 180, or 158 um, micro henries. so do I need to try different values of capacitors and inductors so that it doesn't draw as much current? Um, because, I mean, it could draw like 200 amps from these batteries for like half a second and that'd be plenty to burn out the um, the MOSFETs because this is only going to limit current average current of 15 amps so if it goes over that for a couple for like half a second it's not going to stop that it's not, probably not going to pop so how do I limit the current so um so yeah that's about it for the um, ZVS driver I finally got one to work so success on that but Gonna fail that it burned out, so um, but that's about it. Thanks for watching.